But for us today, he tells the disciple, I want you to go to every nation and every people. I want you to go. And he says it right to us. Go to every nation. Go, because among you, I am going to send a multitude. We had a lady one day that came to church, and she cried through the whole church. And after it was over, I went over to see what was going on. And my friend Brenda <laughs> said, I was just driving to church, and I saw this woman walking down the road crying. And I pulled over, and I said, you look like you need to go to church. And she says, hop in. And that's how we got her. <laughs> you know? I mean, <laughs> okay, you know, that's going to happen. It's going to happen a lot. And it was amazing. What a privilege to take the blessings that God's put upon us and talk to a woman in the world who was so broken that she's down to just walking down the road crying. There is a peace and a plan for every person in this room. If you have accepted the salvation of Christ, you are saved to serve. There is a peace for you. God will show you what it is. But every person in here has a place in what is about to unfurl. We are going to be involved in a beautiful thing that God is outpouring. As the world goes nuts, we get to put our mind on Jesus. There was um, one of my, we were at the Van Center in New York City. And um, it was, there was, every week we had a newsletter that we did from all the stories of when we would go into the city in our vans and do blood pressure screening. And we also handed out soup and sandwiches down in the Bowery's. And there was a point where then Juanita Kretschmeyer would type out all the names of everybody in the, in the van who went out that day, week. And the computer kept going down, kept going down, kept going down. And she finally opened it, and she tried to see the name where it kept going down. And it came to a real name. It came to a name. Uh, I can't say her, I won't say her full name. Her name was Cami. And um, she went to her, and she said, Cami was a heroin addict that had come to live with us at the Van Center. And she worked in the kitchen, but she'd been there for about a month. And Juanita said, God is waiting for you. He ha keeps stopping my newsletter on your name. You need to make a decision. You know, there's a hole in the wall if you let Satan in. Give your heart to Jesus. Join us here in this place. And Cami prayed, and um, she was crying, and she came down, and she said, I just, I think I'm a Christian now. <laughs> and I, she said, will you pray with me? And I, I said, yeah, do you want to pray? And she goes, yeah, I've never prayed myself, but I don't know how to do it. And I said, well, I'll pray and you can pray after me. You can just copy what I say till you learn. And so we prayed and she prayed. Well, the next day, it was my turn to go out into the inner city and she wanted to go on the van with us. She wanted to go with me. I said, absolutely. So she came, and a guy got on the van, and he was a heroin addict. He rolled up his sleeves so he could take his blood pressure, and you could see his tracks, his needle marks up this arm, up that arm, top of his feet, back of his legs. His whole body was covered with needle marks. And as we gave him the blood test he said help me please help me and I said you need to go to the hospital and I wish I knew the things I knew now I would have found a better way but I knew they would help him and he said will you pray for me and I said yes and he turned he said but I want her to pray. And he turned to Cammy, And Cammy's like, I've only prayed one prayer in my whole life. <laughs> and somebody told me how to do it. But she, he knew that she fought his battle, the same battle. And he wanted her prayers because it was so valuable to him. 
Some of the people that met Jesus never were scholars. They couldn't explain the history and all the theology, but they knew what they knew, that God loved them. Hi, Bean, I see you. I have a visitor. Hi. Are you going to come and help me? God has a place for you if you know one prayer and you know Jesus can save you. That's it. That's all you need. There was a little girl we met in um, Ecuador. The first day we came to the work site, there was a little girl. And um, she said to me, uh, uh, she came to the site and she asked for Sergio and she kept asking and asking, where's Sergio, Sergio, Sergio. And uh, finally, he came in the afternoon because he was trying to find our clothes. Delta had lost all of our clothes, and um, which is really fun to have to spend 10 days in the same pair of clothes. And we had these Delta blankets they gave us, and we wrapped them here and here. And, you know, and the kids, I came out of my door one day, and they were all sitting on chairs in front of my <laughs> my door, and they, I said, what are you guys doing? And they said, we're trying to see the Delta wear of the day so we can, we can all keep up. But this little girl came, and she took Sergio by the hand, and she said, you remember me? You remember me. You remember me? And he, he didn't remember who she was because we'd been there three years before. And so she took him by the hand and took him through the village to a house and she ran in the house, and she brought out a little tiny plastic backpack. <laughs> Somebody's going to get him. A little tiny plastic backpack. And the bottom had been sewn on over and over and over. And she held it up, and she said, You remember me, Sergio? You remember me? And three years before, it was her birthday. And Sergio had bought her a backpack full of school things. And her mother had sewed that over and over because it was not well made. And she looked at me and she goes, remember me. Remember me. She tried. She wanted to get my suitcase and come back to America, she told me. She was so cute. And I want her to in the worst way. And she's like, I remember every song you sing. I remember every sermon. I remember everything you say. And she said, and, and, that's it. That's it. A lonely world looking for a God with skin on him. We are the God with skin on him. We get to touch him and feel him and buy him a backpack. Whatever you can do, fly if you can fly. Walk if you can't fly. Crawl. I watched Grace till she was 90 years old hand out flyers. And now she laid down her life. And I am part of her picking it up because she picked a girl that was just so nuts. And she picked me and she taught me about the grace of God and the love of Christ for other humans. We are to keep going no matter what happens. If we have nothing left but to crawl, crawl. Do whatever you can for the name and the purpose of Jesus Christ on this earth. <laughs>